Kendrick Perkins. Happy Monday, everyone. Coming up, Brooklyn shocked the NBA world when they parted ways with Kenny Atkinson 62 games into the season. We will dig into all the scoop on that and next steps for the Nets. First, though, it's just another game. That's what we heard from many of the Lakers heading into yesterday. You know, one of 82, blah, blah, blah. Of course, no one believed a word of it. Even the arena's own marquee had Battle for L.A. scrawled across the top. But actually, it was bigger than even that. The truth is that while the Lakers have spent much of this season reigning over the Western Conference, some high-profile losses to elite teams had raised questions about whether they could really win the NBA title or even get to the NBA Finals. No one is asking those questions anymore, and that doesn't mean the Lakers are going to win. But after this weekend, there should no longer be any doubt that they could thanks to a blockbuster weekend that started with Friday's win over Milwaukee. Anthony Davis was a monster, and LeBron was just brilliant, not only dropping 37 against the best defense in the league, but taking over checking Giannis when AD hit some early foul trouble. I want you guys to take a look at this. Giannis, normally a boulder downhill when you give him time to pick up steam, but just kind of bounces off LeBron there who denies his path to the hoop, no basket. Giannis was just two for eight with LeBron guarding him one-on-one, -on -one, and yet all of that would prove just a prelude to what the Lakers did yesterday. The Clippers came into this game on a tear. They had won six straight. They were 10-0 overall when their whole team was healthy. They also already had two very high-profile wins over the Lakers this season, including a Christmas Day game in which Kawhi <laughs> seemed to get the better of LeBron in crucial moments down the stretch. That didn't happen yesterday. Yes, the Clips were in control early, with Paul George setting the Nets on fire. And check out the spin move from Kawhi on LeBron, right into the dunk. But as the minutes tick by, the Lakers attack deepened, thanks to sparkling play from LeBron, AD, and former Clipper, Avery Bradley. And in the final minutes, when it counted most, LeBron was everywhere, scrambling on the floor for loose balls, trying to draw charges, sinking his free throws, and then this, with 40 seconds on the clock, driving straight to the basket as the crowd, there for what was supposed to be a Clippers home game, serenaded him with MVP chance. Kyle Kuzma went a step further when LeBron got back to the bench, crowning him, and yeah, there you go. Thanks, Kuz. Although not everyone was convinced, here was Patrick Beverly in the locker room. Can you describe the challenge um, it is defensively when LeBron... No challenge. Mm -hmm. well, particularly the end of the game. No challenge. Can you describe the describe what it's like as a defender to when he tries to force the, the switches with the guard? I love Pat Bev and his trash talk, but... This was a wastebasket too far. LeBron scored or assisted on 19 <coughs> of the Lakers' 27 fourth-quarter points, capping off a week in which he bested Kawhi, outplayed Giannis, and reminded the world that Zion Williamson is, in fact, still a rookie. As I have noted on this show over and over, Giannis has been my leader in the clubhouse for MVP all season. But there is still a quarter of the season left to be played, and LeBron is indeed making his case, as are the Lakers as a whole. This was not just another game. This was not just another weekend, and it is becoming very clear this is not just another team. They are contenders, full stop. So, Perk, what about for you? Where does your MVP race sit right now? Well, to be honest, and there's no disrespect to Giannis, but I'm going with King James, or should I say Wash King. <laughs> we need to hand this man his flowers so he can smell them right now. I mean, what LeBron is doing right now, the knock on Braun, like the four seasons he was in, in Cleveland. Oh, he's in the weak Eastern Conference. Well, now he's doing it in the West. Right now, he's averaging a double-double. He never done that in his whole his whole 17 years of playing in the NBA. He's playing some of the best basketball I've seen him play. The Lakers are sitting at the number one seed right now, and LeBron is playing beautiful basketball. And this weekend, he took on the challenge, and he destroyed both Giannis, and Kawhi, he, bo he outplayed them and showed them that he's still the best player in the world. Reigning MVP, reigning finals MVP, and LeBron looked like a five-time MVP if he would win the award this year. Now, I, I don't think necessarily it, it's fair to put him over Giannis at this point, but they're neck and neck. Yeah. To me, there's nothing that screams about Giannis's case that he's certainly the MVP, and nor LeBron's because Giannis is that good. But, like, okay. He changed his position in year 17 mm -hmm. to point guard. Leads the league in assists. Assist. The one mm -hmm. statistical measure to, to, to encapsulate that position. 
Uh, let's see, head to head, beat Giannis. Uh, point differential. If, you know, Giannis did beat him earlier what, this season. Of course. Yep. I'm just seeing mm -hmm. this weekend. Point differential. If you want a statistical marker to say, well, you know, Giannis has the one of the highest PRs of all time. Well, the point differential when LeBron is on the court versus off the court, resting during games, mm -hmm. is a bigger margin than when Giannis is doing the same thing for his team. Mm -hmm. So that's another measure of saying that he does more for the Lakers than Giannis does for the Bucks. And then, like, let's not forget, like, he's 35 years old, year 17. <laughs> he has na navigated uh, a, a China controversy and maybe the biggest tragedy in the history of the NBA this season. That's extra stuff that, you know, quite frankly, Giannis is not going through. And playing in the better conference and has the spotlight on him every single day. I mean, to me, it, all those things, the actual basketball life experience that LeBron James goes through, adds to the degree of difficulty, and I think that should be taken into account by the voters. Well, here are some of the numbers, right? You bring up some of the numbers. I want to show some of them, because to me, these numbers do go in Giannis's favor when you say, look, of course, the assists <laughs> higher up for LeBron and the fact that he is leading the league, important. Giannis leading the league in PER, though, and that really is such an important stat for me, right? Your player efficiency kind of encapsulates so much of your impact on the game. And also, if you look at the minutes, Giannis is playing four less minutes a game and yet he's still averaging more points, more rebounds, stuff like that. So that is some of the hard number stuff that to me has made Giannis <laughs> my leader here so far. But I do, and I have said this on this show for years, think that MVP is about more than stats. I, I just do. Right. And I have watched every other league separate out who has the best stats for the season and who is the most valuable player. This is not some new idea I came up mm -hmm. with, that the NFL has a best offensive player award, that the NHL has a separate scoring award, the NBA doesn't do that, and it is in an age where analytics has become so important, and to me, rightly so, we have leaned on stats more and more every year that we have gone through and voted for MVP. And I do think value comes into play with leadership. Now, I think both of these guys have been very good leaders, but I do think some of the stuff you're talking about does have to come into account. The fact that he went out and recruited Anthony Davis, that he has made Anthony Davis so comfortable and into the monster that he is, and really let AD's game, which was so strong in New Orleans for so many years with no help, have a place to flourish, and this has been able to work. When the narrative going into the season was, hey, Ka uh, Kyrie didn't want to play with him anymore, Kawhi I didn't want to come play with him. Paul George didn't want to come play with him, that sort of thing. So there's a lot of different factors that come into play for me with this. And I do think we still have a quarter of the season yes. to go. So my money is on both of these guys making it a really good race. I just think it, we do have one. Go for it. It's one more quick point. If it's a tie, and maybe, it's, maybe some people don't look at it as a tie, but I kind of look at it <laughs> like a tie. If it's a tie, the tie should go to the better basketball player. Who's better at playing basketball? Boy. It's LeBron James. <laughs> well, I mean, he does so many more things. I mean, no, Giannis is a great rebounder. Great I mean, Giannis is an incredible basketball player, but he can't do the things to manipulate a defense the way LeBron can. I want to, we got to move on, but take oh. a look at how Las Vegas has moved things around. These oh. were their MVP odds on Friday. These are the MVP odds today after this weekend. Pretty interesting. All right, the weekend, also the first time since 2009, the Lakers had consecutive wins against teams who are at least 20 games above 500, right? So do those two victories, both at Staples, do you think that makes them title favorites? Are you willing to go that far? JaVale McGee was. I, I know. <laughs> JaVale McGee said last night, we are the best team in the world. <laughs> and he should be pounding out his chest after that weekend. <laughs> I, I think we had a pool of contenders coming into this season because Kawhi left Toronto. They fell off the, the uh, you know, kind of favorite list. And Golden State, obviously, that dynasty was broken up, so they fell off the favorite list. The contenders were Raptors Lakers, Raptors are Clippers. still there on the record list, though. <laughs> sure, but in terms of favorites. Yeah. Lakers, Clippers, Milwaukee were the teams. All those teams played in Staples Center this, this weekend. The only one to come out of the round robin with a perfect record was the Lakers, and I think that says a lot. Well, I mean, <clears throat> they are the title favorites. When you look at them, they have the best duo since Kobe and Shaq, and I've said this time and time again with LeBron and AD. What LeBron and Anthony Davis did over this past weekend was incredible. They dominated. You looked at, we talk about LeBron in the MVP conversation. We might want to start throwing Anthony Davis in that conversation also because he's been a monster on both ends of the court. He's already the front runner for defensive player of the year. But the thing that I'm looking at that I've watched with the Lakers are they're peaking, they are peaking at the right time and their stars, are, I mean, their role players are being stars in their role. You look at guys like Dwight Howard, who had a, a great game against Denver. 
You look at a guy like Avery Bradley, who had a great game last night, and Caldwell Pope. You're looking at guys that like Caruso who comes in and change the game. So I think right now they're finding their niche. And I must say, I got to give credit to Kyle Kuzma because although offensively last night he didn't